In this video, I want to talk about beta oxidation, which is essentially the process by which we break down fatty acids, specifically for energy or for what will become energy. Where does this process occur? It occurs in the mitochondrial matrix, and we'll see why that makes sense in just a moment. So I just said that we're breaking down a fatty acid. That's not entirely true. We're instead breaking down an activated fatty acid, which is an acyl-CoA. Okay. So Notice what I've drawn here is this acyl-CoA here with these first two carbons next to the carbonyl being shown. The reason why I did that is because what do we call the carbon that's right next to the carbonyl carbon, which is this carbon here? We call it the alpha carbon. The one right next to it would be considered the beta carbon. Right? So if this is beta oxidation, we would expect to see that this beta carbon is oxidized. And that's actually what happened. Or what happens, excuse me. So this process, beta oxidation, is only four steps. The first one being an oxidation step. And this is actually the first oxidation step, as there is more than just one. So now, in this first oxidation step, we're taking an acyl-CoA and we're turning it, what are we doing? From here, from this acyl-CoA, we're turning it into a trans-enoil-CoA. So why is this called trans-enoil-CoA? Well, we made this double bond here between the alpha and beta carbon. So we lost two of those hydrogens. Losing hydrogens is oxidation. So this acyl-CoA was oxidized to this trans-enoil-CoA. Why is this called trans-enoil-CoA? I'm not really sure what this oil means, but this ene, the ene portion of the ene oil, comes from this alkene here, this double bond. And it's called trans because this, R, this long R chain is trans to this, um, the part with the substituent with the CoA on it. Okay, but in any case, this acyl CoA is oxidized to trans enoil CoA, so something else must have been reduced. In fact, we're taking an FAD and turning it into an FADH2. So we've reduced FAD to FADH2, which can yield us energy. Once we have this trans enoil CoA, there's this hydration step. Well, what do you imagine a hydration step to do? If you want to hydrate yourself, you drink some water, right? So that's exactly what this step here is involved in. So in the hydration step, we're going to add water across this double, band, double bond. And actually, I forgot to put the enzyme name up here. Um, before I continue on with this hydration step, this acyl-CoA um, was converted to this trans coa by acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. Okay, we lost those hydrogens. So dehydrogenase. It's a redu oxidation reduction reaction. Anyway, sorry about that. So here, at this second step, this hydration step, we're adding water across this double bond. So the OH is going to go onto the beta carbon, and the, the other, the H will go onto the alpha carbon. So what we get is this L beta hydroxyacyl CoA. Well, does this name make sense? Um, well, we have a hydroxyacyl, specifically it's a beta hydroxyacyl. So this is an acyl-CoA, but with a hydroxyl group on the beta carbon. So OH group on the beta carbon, beta hydroxyacyl-CoA. Why is this L? Well, this beta carbon now is chiral. It has one, two, three, four different substituents. So and in this case, it actually is L stereochemistry. I didn't draw it that way. I didn't need to get too complicated. I just want you to see what's going on here. So this is the hydration step. This step is catalyzed by enoil-CoA hydratase, which makes sense. It's uh, it's hydrating enoil-CoA. So so we get this L-beta hydroxyacyl-CoA. Once we have this L-beta hydroxyacyl-CoA, we have our third step, which is actually our second oxidation step. So in our second oxidation step, we're taking L-beta hydroxyacyl-CoA and turning into beta ketoacyl CoA. So what's going on here? What have we done? Well, if it's an oxidation step, we're oxidizing this beta carbon. We're turning it from an OH group, right, to a carbonyl. So that's more bonds to oxygen, which is, which is an oxidation step. In addition, we lost these hydrogens. So you can think about it as the loss of the hydrogens, or you can think about it as more bonds to oxygen. So in this case, this uh, L-beta hydroxyacyl CoA is oxidized, so something else is reduced, and in this case, we're taking an NAD plus and reducing it to an NADH. This step is catalyzed by beta 
hydroxyacyl CoA dehydrogenase. So now we have this beta ketoacyl CoA. <coughs> Excuse me. So why does this name make sense? Well, beta ketone, right? This carbon has a carbon on either side of it, so it's a beta ketone and it's an acyl CoA. So now what we're going to do with this step, this fourth step and last step of beta oxidation is the cleavage step. And in this step, if you, we're actually going to cut this beta keto acyl CoA right here. Notice that if you look on the right side of that dotted purple line, we essentially have an acetyl CoA. Over here, we just have an acyl group on this left side. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a coenzyme A, right, via the enzyme called thiolase. Thiolase. So we're going to make um, a bond to this this sulfur group, hence the thiolase portion there. To to we're going to add it here to make uh, to make this acetyl CoA hop hop off, which is what we have here. So we have we free up an acetyl CoA, and let me actually write that in a different color. We free up an acetyl CoA right here, which is a two carbon molecule. So we knock, we cut off two carbons, and then we're left with this acyl group that we attach a CoA to. So we end up with this acyl CoA, which is what we started with, right? We started with an acyl CoA. How is this one different? Well, this one is now two carbons shorter than this one that we started with was, right? Because this acetyl CoA, which is two carbons long, was cut off of the original thing. So now that we have this acyl CoA that is now two carbons shorter. than what we started with. That's really terrible writing, I really apologize. <laughs> but in any case, what's important is that now we have this acyl CoA that's two carbons shorter, it's essentially, it, it can start off the process again. It's ready for another round of beta oxidation. So this thing can go through all four of these steps all over again. Okay, so now what's important to keep in mind about beta oxidation? Well, what happens in each round? Each round of beta oxidation results in one FADH2, one NADH, and one acetyl CoA. The first oxidation step yielded an FADH2, the second one yielded an NADH, and both of those things will go to the electron transport chain to be reoxidized for energy. What about this acetyl CoA though? Well, where have we seen acetyl CoA before? We saw it in the TCA cycle, the Krebs cycle. So it'll go to the Krebs cycle. And when it when one acetyl CoA goes through the Krebs cycle, we get three NADHs, we get one FADH2, and we get one GTP. This idea here is very, very important to keep in mind when we think about how to calculate the energy that we get from a particular length of a of a fatty acid. Okay, um, and we'll get to this in the, in the, in the future videos. Thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful.